I'm Missy Howard and thank you for tuning into the Trucker Barbie channel. I'm a long haul truck driver. I have a class A license, but I drive straight trucks, which are class B and I'm an expediter and I drive for XPO specifically. And I've been driving for XPO now for almost two years and I would just never dream of leaving. I love XPO. Uh, I have driven for another carrier, Panther. And I don't have anything bad to say about Panther. The only reason I left Panther is I couldn't find the right owner team driver uh, combination. So I would have a really good owner and a string of crappy team drivers, or I would have a really crappy owner and a, a few good team drivers. And that is really how it worked out for me at Panther. But I don't have anything bad to say about the company or their dispatch or anything like that. Uh, I just prefer XPO and I love it here. So uh, what can you make as a straight truck expediter? That's going to depend on a number of factors. Number one would be, are you going to want to just uh, go out and buy a straight truck and start out as an owner operator? I don't recommend that you can do it. There's no law says you can't, but I don't recommend it because you need to learn there is a learning curve in this business, especially with regards to freight lanes. And uh, I have a video about that called The Magic Rectangle of Freight, and you can check that out here if you like. Um, but you can do it, but I can't give you an idea on what you would make because there are so many variables there with uh, what you would be paying for your truck and uh, what you would be paying for fuel and uh, just whatever arrangement you had with the carrier that you drove for or whether or not you found your own loads. So there's so many variables there that I really can't advise you on that. I can only speak from experience. Another arrangement would be if you drove with an owner operator. So you drove with somebody who owned the truck and they're gonna pay you a percentage, usually somewhere between 20 and 25%. And sometimes they'll even split their bonus with you. Some of them get bonuses from the carriers for being out so many days, for not turning down loads and so on. So you might make a little bit more money teaming with an owner operator. The downside to that would be they've always got the option of saying, I can't pay you this week. I'm gonna be late paying you this, that, and the other, and there'll always be a reason or excuse. So there is a, a downside to driving with an owner operator. I haven't experienced that and honestly, I would not tolerate it. Once would be the last time. The first time would be the last time. I've got to be paid and I can't have anybody holding back on my pay. Another arrangement would be what I call the standard arrangement and that is where uh, you have a truck owner who is leased on with Panther or XPO or Bolt or some other expedite company. It doesn't matter, FedEx. Okay, there's two ways to go about that usually. Okay, and there are just a few little differences here and there. Okay, one arrangement would be, okay, you're going to drive their truck as a team driver. So you've got a team driver with you. Okay, and they're going to take 40% and you're going to take 60% plus the fuel surcharge, which means you're going to pay for fuel. All right, and uh, so that is one arrangement and that in that arrangement, you and your team driver would split 30% each. Okay, and you would uh, most likely, I guess, be splitting uh, what the fuel costs were. That's pretty standard. I've done it that way. And honestly, I made just about the same as the other arrangement I'm getting ready to uh, run down with you. But the advantage to this arrangement where the owner gets 40% and pays for repairs is the drivers are going to get 30% each. They're going to pay for fuel and they're going to pay for tolls and they're going to have more control over their home time as a result because they're paying for fuel and they're also going to have control over things like idling in case the APU goes out you'll have the option to idle if you need to because most of these trucks have a 20 minute idling cutoff it'll idle for tw uh, anywhere between 5 and 20 minutes depending on uh, how the owner set that truck up okay and it'll shut off automatically after 5 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then you've got to start it again. That's not what you would want to have to do if you were paying for fuel and if your APU went out. You would want to be able to constantly idle if you had to. Okay, and also another issue with that is um, 
uh, states like California that don't allow any idling. So it would have to be a clean idle truck in order for you to do that in the state of California and some other places. Okay, so that's one arrangement and that is called 40-60 where the owner takes 40 and the driver split 60%, pay for fuel and get the fuel surcharge and split that as well and also split the tolls. Now the most standard arrangement, the most common arrangement is the owner of the truck who is signed on with Panther, XPO, uh, whoever, will take 60% and they'll cover repairs as well as fuel and tolls and they'll get the fuel surcharge and then the drivers will split 20% each, okay? So that is the most standard arrangement. I'm talking about team drivers. I'm not gonna go into what you would make as a solo at all because I don't have any experience with that, so I can't advise you there. So what would you make under this, what I call most common or standard arrangement? Um, you could expect, okay, assuming that it was a full week out, all right? It wasn't the little half dinky week before home time or the little half dinky wink, uh, sorry, wink, <laughs> dinky week after home time, okay? We're talking about being a full week out. A bad week would be $400, $500, $600, okay? A good week would be something like $900, $1,000, 1200 sometimes even $1,400. Uh, dollars. I have done 16. I have done 18. Okay. You can expect to run an average of 2,000 to 4,000 miles a week. Um, this is not your world if you um, expect to be driving all of the time. If you think that the truck is going to be constantly moving and that it's going to be steady, do not do straight truck expediting. I repeat, if you think that you should be driving all the time and the truck should always be moving and you should rarely have to sit between loads. Straight truck driving is not, I repeat, not for you. <clears throat> it varies from week to week how much you're going to run. And so this is why I say you're going to average about $1,000 a week, okay, if you're on the road for four weeks at a time. But like I said, I'm not talking about that little half week before home time that you didn't drive a full week. That's going to be maybe $100, $200, $300. And then the week that you come back from home time, that might just be half a week. Okay? That's going to be maybe one, two, three hundred dollars $300. All right? So, and then of course, the week you're not driving at all that you're home, I take seven days off. I'm out for four weeks and take seven days off. That seven days, you're not going to get paid for that at all, of course. So, you have to keep that in mind. Some people choose to stay out for five weeks because of this, because of the front side of home time and the back side of home time being so short sometimes. They'll stay out five weeks instead of four in order to compensate for that. Me, I want to go home to my family and friends after four weeks. Four weeks is my limit. I'm about ready to just get my stuff off the truck and walk home at that point. I'm so sick of being on the road at four weeks, I can't stand it, okay? And so, and when I get home, I want seven days off. And I insist on it, and I won't have it any other way. So that's gonna depend on you and the owner you drive for also. Some of them say, well, you're only gonna get one day off for every week you're out. That's pretty old school, and it's too old school for me. I simply will not do it, but, some people like to stay on the road months at a time. That's up to you. So anyway, if you are working under the standard arrangement, and if your truck is earning about $1.30 per mile, and if you're getting paid for deadhead and empty move, which I do, okay, uh, we get $0.50 cents, uh, per mile paid by XPO to the truck. 50 cents per mile for deadhead and empty move. That's going to pay each driver at a, at a rate of 20%, about 10 cents a mile each for deadhead and empty move, okay? So some companies don't, they pay a, a fuel surcharge, but it goes to whoever's paying for fuel. So if the owner is paying for fuel, they get all that, 
like let's say you're at Panther and let's say you don't get an empty move bonus or a deadhead bonus, then the drivers are going to be driving for free under that arrangement because Panther only pays a certain amount unless there is, like I said, a deadhead or empty move bonus that is negotiated. Another thing you need to prepare for is you need to prepare for negotiation because there will be times you need to negotiate. Okay, standard, uh, usually uh, just common practice. When you get west of the Mississippi, okay, and um, maybe for the exception of Laredo and El Paso and Los 